Welcome, my name is Rogaya Sek and I will moderate this uh, episode of Artists in Conversation. This is a series of broadcasts by Dutch culture to learn more about the cultural climate in several countries by offering artists the opportunity to go into conversation with each other. Every edition of the series consists of a dialogue between an artist from the Netherlands and an artist from another country. By sharing experiences and observations, we get to know the artists, their practices, the cultural sector of their country and the environment that they work in. Today, we will dive deeper into the artistic di dialogue between the Netherlands and Germany with artists from both countries. Our guests today are Anna Pletz, Luna Spoo and Miriam Sarawi. And we will start with Anna Spletz and afterwards Luna and Miriam will go into conversation with each other. Anna Pletz, has been working as a freelance performance artist, author, and moderator. She works with self-written texts, choreography, and academic artistic research. She was part of performance collective Klitsch AG, and she was the first artist from Hamburg to perform at the Offen Faust uh, Gallery. Welcome, Anna Pretz. Sometimes I don't feel like an artist. I feel creative within a structure. Sometimes I feel like there is nothing to do but art, and sometimes I feel like there is nothing to do in art but reproducing things that are already there to numb myself and others. After rescheduling, rethinking, restructuring again, I actually really like the way you work it. And I want to share a room with you, discover and learn from you. But you seem far away these days behind my screen. I want you closer but sometimes I feel like I need space. And then I write on a very tiny piece of paper and it's not because I have nothing to say. It's because I'm tired of fighting, of pointing out, of sharing and caring, of putting my finger in your wounds, our collective ones or mine, of breathing, holding the breasts, doing the work, supporting, pointing things out again, of sitting at home almost by myself because fight, sleep, repeat. I want to rest on your shoulders and I want to let you know that in tough times you can also rest on mine. Because resting is a part of becoming, of healing, of fighting. We are evolving, creating and we still have a long way to go together, softening, easing in and slowing down. Sometimes I cry because I don't feel free to work, because I feel the urge to be political, but it seems hopeless to sharpen the sword again, to fight against hardened words, ideas, beliefs, to cut through their... Sometimes I ask women or girls I work with to scream and they tell me they have never heard their own voices rising. We start crying while they scream. We need the power of all of us, the full one, the angry one, and we need each and every shoulder for those of us who are tired for a while. And we need trust and forgiveness to help each other grow and learn, unlearn and become. And sometimes we need the sparkle, the joy, the light, the inspiration and all of the pleasure. I don't know what else to say. Sometimes I stand in the front row and sometimes speechless aside. Or I walk right behind you and adore the strength of my sisters and brothers who rear up again, who roar while I want to go home and hide, while I need to rest. Sometimes I don't know if we win with weapons, with love, with fear or with pleasure, but I always trust in us. We'll grow. I want to thank Anna Pretz. Uh, she pre-recorded it, so um, we can't talk with her now, but I want to go uh, into her piece um, with uh, Luna and Miriam. Um, but I think it's uh, best to first uh, tell the audience who you are. So Luna Spoo, Spoo the co-founder and artistic director of Uyun, a cultural center in Berlin for emerging approaches between the fields of fine arts performance art, theater, literature, dance, music, and much more. Her, her focus lies in the production and promotion of events 
with the aim of supporting cross-cultural dialogue, among others, between queer feminist and anti-racist discourses. And she grew up in Germany as a daughter of two Moroccan immigrants. Um, Miriam Sarawi was one of the founders of Zina Platform, now called Female Economy in Amsterdam. Um, she worked works with interdisciplinary art forms, including theater, documentary, and community art. Um, and she's the advisor Morocco at Dutch culture. Um, she also, she's also born in Morocco uh, to a Moroccan father and a Dutch mother. Welcome to both of you. Um, and I want to start um, with the piece of um, uh, Anna Pretz. Uh, Luna, did you recognize something uh, of her words? Um, you mean if, if I recognize something that could have been a quote? Something that, in she, general? something that she said. Um, I mean, some, some key words that I like immediately remember is healing. Um, and I feel like maybe the struggle of being an, an artist, not being an artist of, um, yeah, maybe of like emotional imbalance or the seeking of balance. So mm -hmm. I'm, I can relate to it in a, to a certain extent, but, um, can you yeah. already tell us a little bit, uh, about how you can relate to it? To healing and the necessary, like the necessity of healing. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're we're all we're all traumatized on so many levels, especially as like black and brown bodies. Um, and I, I feel the recent discourse over the past years allowed us to be more in touch with it without that being kind of stigmatized. So I, I feel that is something that um, I could relate to in terms of the willingness and, and the ability to. Um, to share the the need for healing, yes. the need for care, especially collective healing, and that's something, um, yeah, something I could relate to. Yes, I think we will go deeper in that uh, thing later on. And Miriam, are you ever tired of putting fingers into wounds? Wounds. One, not not tired, but. Um, when I heard the whole piece, mm -hmm. um, and the, the finger in the wound is, of course, a part of it, for me, it was like listening to somebody who was talking about life, you know, as life is, as a, mm -hmm. as a, as a river with emotions, with actions, with uh, mistakes, with uh, um, healing, with uh, um, not knowing, with you know, with resting, she was she was naming everything, and uh, I thought that was really, really n uh, nice and 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 and, and big. Uh, but it was it was what I liked about it is that it at some point it was she really made um, she she went from the I to the we. So at the end, I thought, oh, she is really talking about this interconnection, you know, always being wanting to be in connection with others. And that can be sometimes tiring. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, I mean, I, for, my, for myself, it's, it's something that I really recognize because it's, it's really a big part of what I do. And sometimes I also have to, you know, to, to take some time off to, to re, re, re rethink or refeel what I am, you know, uh, instead of being always interlinked with others. Also but because I, your work is so much about the connection with other people. Yeah, and that's that's good because that's what I want to do. And I think that for the if you 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 look at it in a global perspective, I mean that's a good thing that uh, that we <laughs> we work more towards uh, a we a we world than an I world. Um, I think that especially here in the West, we are really um, um, the indi individu uh, individualization has, uh, ha has, has done a lot of harm also, and there are a lot of wounds. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so it's, it's also, yeah, it's like Lu Luna said, it's also about a balance, you know, now knowing how, when you have to step back a bit, how to be kind to yourself. One sentence, uh, the first one was, sometimes I don't feel like an artist. I feel creative within, within a structure. 
Um, do you ever feel limited uh, by the cultural structure, Luna? I mean, so we, we run this space that's owned by the state, but our organization is an independent non-for-profit organization, so we have some sort of freedom. But as soon as I feel there's funding involved, there's an agenda attached to it. So these are the limitations. Um, we, we are sometimes um, going beyond these limitations and kind of risk the responses. Mm -hmm. But I feel we can because we are um, in such a delicate position, um, like the space being run almost solely by members of the black and brown community and queer and trans community. So I feel this is something very unique and um, taking that away or limiting that context is kind of a legitimate way to pinpoint or expose censorship. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say the artistic freedom is there, but we always have Don't to kind of consider- it is there or it is there. The it is, the, the artistic freedom is there. Um, the way you translate it into a project within a structure is something that is, um, that can be a challenge, but that's also allowing for more cre creativity. Can you give say. a small example of that? <laughs> I actually can't. <laughs> can't, a big one. Because so there is, I mean, there, there, are funding. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm talking specifically about a funding, like someone who wants to fund a project for a specific reason, um, and. I mean, it, it goes sometimes to the point where they want to do something um, with us. But because I feel that would lean into tokenism, we don't even want to approach it or like dive into it. Um, and often these funders are white, cis male head, and are just kind of tapping into it because it's currently sexy or like trendy or also absolutely necessary. Um, but the agenda might not work for us so we we kind of yeah just try to find a try to find a balance where we're willing to to go ahead with it when there is artistic freedom that we can use or if that that's something that we don't even want to to handle and there's um for example tedfm i i think i've, I've made a post about it on my on my insta before tedfm is um is a global feminist organization but they're transphobic and they are um, also, at least in the in the German context, they're transphobic and I mean, excluding trans women and they are for the ban of the hijab. So for me, that's extremely contradicting. And these for us are like, institute, like organizations that might wanna collaborate where there might be something nice coming out of it, but it's very limiting in a sense that um, we would have to censor ourselves so much that it wouldn't be us or ourselves anymore. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah. There's, a, there's a structure, whether we like it or not. But I feel it is also our responsibility to make sure that that structure is not imposed or reflected onto the artists that we work with. Yeah, Miriam, do you recognize uh, that? Yeah, well, I think that Luna and myself, we are, you know, we are <coughs> created our own space. Eh? We have our own organization, our own community. So that's something that makes you also free in a way. So um, I'm, I'm not really feeling trapped in structures, but of course we are dealing with um, partners and funding, of course. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but with funding, I've, uh, it's also, uh, also really interesting sometimes, you know, to just see how you write things and then at the end do what you want <laughs> well because you know freedom yes yeah, especially with artistic projects i mean you don't know uh, where you're going to so in a way you can have all these ideas but i mean sometimes things move and you have also um you know the the, the things that occur from life and, and I, I think that's also very important to always be open to that. But in the bigger, of course, you have to write down what you are going to do and how many, if it's, for example, theater, you have to say how, how many performances you will make. And there is, of course, this whole 
administration, but I mean, yeah, I, I, we have been around for some time. So I think that that's also a, a good place where we are, but it's always, you know, we all, you always have to fight and to get the funding and to, right. you know, uh, so it's, uh, that's the structure right, where you have to deal with. Um, okay. uh, but I, I, I think, yeah. I mean, for for that for for that work, that part of the work I'm doing. I mean, I'm doing a lot of other things, but I I I feel quite. It doesn't smooth. bother you that, that much. No. Oh, I'm moving my computer. Yeah. No. no. Um, so I no. want you to give you the stage, um, Luna. Starting with you, you 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 brought something. So Kayan was was asking for something that kind of resembles our work or, or something that we can. Um, elaborate more on, and there's this really aesthetically mesmerizing video piece that Arjun Rush, um, the head of digital media in our team, <coughs> has produced um, based on something that we call a curatorial focus. So when when we started with you, we wanted to kind of break free from all these like Western frameworks, um, kind of like, okay, this is an artistic center or a cultural center. You do events every Monday, to, like every Sunday you have I don't know a, a concert or something like that. So we were, we didn't want to have something that is more con more regular, but something that breaks free and um, discusses a subject that that's within us. And the team that will, I mean, our team is um, like I mentioned, predominantly people. So one thing that consumes us is trauma therapy and healing and post, not post, but like colonialism, um, or so claim post-colonialism. And so we're, we're trying to find like a, how, like a way to acknowledge the trauma within our bodies and how we can embrace it, but also heal from it. And embodied temporalities is like on the trail of embodied memories. It's some, it's a, it's a curatorial project that's ongoing. And so what we did is we we did a research for eight months with different people. I mean, for example, we would have like a specific group of people that we want to work with and that want to work with us. And we we kind of elaborate or like create a, a theme, a question, and we respond to it in different in different ways, um, in many, many different ways. And so some of the artists were um, Google Letumama from South Africa, a multidisciplinary artist who who's researched um, African rituals and then reinvented or redefined them in a collective setting. And it, it, was a, it was a research project, but it also turned into a performance piece. And that's also an ongoing project. So there's this, and then um, th there, was, there were other projects like um, Go Find Me, which was an online game on archiving black trans realities. And, um, and there was another project with Ahmed Baba, um, who's also going to go on tour now with this project, Ilk, that is kind of discussing, elaborating, researching, um, living through like, the practice and realities and day-to-day -day life um, of, of a queer Arab man in Berlin, for example, in diaspora. The video that I shared is something that visually and audiovisually kind of narrates the story of, of our work where we both have cultural uh, curatorial focuses and one of them was embodied temporalities like on the trail of embodied memories and that deals with um, the recognition and kind of the embracing of the trauma or the stories that our bodies hold.
Thank you. Shit, every time I see it, no matter how often I see this video, it always touches me and gives me goosebumps. Like it's so beautifully um, kind of reflecting the intensity of this project and the intensity of every individual that was part of it and also the healing process. And yeah, I mean, it's it's a project that was uh, curated by, by Madhu Nita Nandi and this video um, was produced by Arjun Raj, like head of digital media in our team. And it was just mesmerizing the work they put together. And uh, yeah, I mean, it was a long project, it's still an ongoing project. And actually as of in two weeks, they're going to Birmingham with two of these projects that kind of came out of out of this whole research um, phase and that then turned into a festival. But then during the lockdown, <laughs> so it's like a hybrid event. Sometimes people could come in, sneak in to see an exhibition. And yeah, I think that was one of the challenging parts of it. But yeah. Yeah, you you did it uh, in, in last year. So, I mean, it's, uh, it was really COVID time, but you managed mm -hmm. to do it live. So we did everything live. Okay. Um, some of the artists were outside of the country. Um, like, uh, I mean, Avril was in India in Bangalore and they just basically produced the videos and we did a live stream or we stream of it and a lot of it was in the space so we did a live stream from the space and I would try to kind of um, find like a way out of this whole live stream context um, and we created a digital festival space called uh, Utopia um, and there people from all over the world could come together to this platform um, and you could like literally walk to one stage and you see another person that is in the in, at the stage at the same time and you can connect with them. Um, so there was like a digital kind of experience. Um, there was an online game as well. And then we did some public um, public uh, performances. Like um, we, we have a small tiny house, like the baby of Uyun, and we took it to a riverside um, and had like a, yeah, like a performance, interactive, kind of public intervention with Exorce, one of the dancers from the video. Um, yeah, I mean, we, we tried to not do live stream only, but it was, yeah. it was definitely a bit challenging in a way. Well, I think the video is really beautiful, yeah, because uh, I, I, I can relate very much to, you know, to the um to the to the body being you know the carrier of 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 memory and of mm. trauma and um um and I've, if i can tell a bit about the work we are doing because we are yeah. also working on bodies but we have we that's that's why i always say i'm a cultural and social entrepreneur because one of the projects that really came out of this um uh, focus on the bodies and on the traumas that a lot of yeah. migrant people who came to, well, for example, the area where we are working in Amsterdam is that a lot of people have are having are not finding the the right way in the health system to um, to be cured, and that and that is uh, something that is it's I, actually quite big. You know, most of the therapists in in the Netherlands are have have um, a, a, a white gaze, you know, because mm. that's that's the way they, the the way they are formed. Mm. And we saw that a lot of people couldn't find, you know, the right help, the right settings, and um, and uh, being a cultural pr platform, we uh, we always say, well, you know. Uh, um, it's it has it's not that something has to be uh, uh, um, you know in, in, in an art it has to be theater it has to be documentary you can also do work because the work has to be done mm. <laughs> so it can be like that so I have a a, um, a, a, a colleague who is a therapist and uh, and we started doing this training based on this you know body work emotional body work. And from that work, we started also doing videos and doing and, t and telling stories. So at the end, it, it, were, it, it were also art projects, but the base was really the, the body, the trauma, the body uh, absorbing memories and, and that you uh, doing this, this focus on it, you can release it and at the end heal it 
if uh, and that's what I really felt in your uh, beautiful piece of video is that um, it's really also about uh, letting 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 the trauma out and being there and when you shine light on something mostly something happens and and healing can start hmm. and i think that's really beautiful that you are creating spaces where this can happen because uh, within uh, our communities this is really needed to to be uh, to work with it but also to uh, put light on it mm. thank you <laughs> yeah i mean absolutely there's a yeah yeah yeah, and I can imagine it's really empowering when you have in a space. So I'm happy for you that you can manage to do it also, you know, really in a space, life, to have all this kind of experience next to each other. Mm -hmm. uh, I was wondering, where is the public? Uh, what kind of public do you have when you have this kind of events? Is it mixed or mm. what, what, how does it work? Um, it depends on the events. We We often... Um, we often have like FUBU events, like for us, by us. So it's only for either uh, uh, black and POC, ind black, indigenous and POC folks, um, or queer trans only. It depends on the event, but I would say that our audience is pretty, um, pretty community-based. Yeah. So it's, um, yeah, I mean, white people are welcome to, to come, but not to all events. Um, and they're not our target audience. Yeah. So, okay. um, we're not catering to white people. And when they, it comes they cater to, to yeah. everywhere. <laughs> and when it comes to uh, different kind of, you know, opinions within the, the, the for example, the, 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 do you have like more traditional people coming in or is it really the niche of um, of your communities do you for example try to have a dialogue or you know something uh, between generations maybe mm -hmm. yeah for sure i mean our, our team is intergenerational um so is the neighborhood um and because it's such a trendy neighborhood it's being gentrified so there are more white people coming in more international white people coming in um and we, we did invite like the neighbors to round tables. We have like once a year, we have like neighbor celebration day where everyone can come learn about us, what we're planning on doing. And um, most people like what we're doing, um, but some people feel excluded, but that's just the reality of it. Um, Cause that's kind of the position that we've been in our whole life. So I, I find that's fair. Um, we like when it comes to class, social, um, kind of accessibility, I would say it's pretty diverse. And we do, I would say we, I mean, the, the, the audience is younger and often multilingual or bilingual. Um, we do have events and kind of uh, support groups that are specifically targeting um, uh, older generation that might not speak German and or um, people of displacement uh, background or migrant background or um, who are currently without a status whatsoever. Uh, and so we, we do, we have like a little support system and we become more and more the space where people reach out to to find support and then we can connect them to other other people who are more professional and that's what they are doing. Um, yeah, so I would say definitely community-based and yeah. marginalized communities-based and um, sometimes even niche like you said like subcultures but the biggest space that we have is like 500 capacity so it's you can't necessarily always fill that with like niche projects so i'd say it's a, yeah. it's a healthy mix and balance what about um, you yeah what we, about we, we i mean i i have been sometimes you know trying to get generations together we we are our venue for example is in a very well, it's not a venue, it's more an atelier, but you can get quite some people in it. Mm -hmm. And we did some sessions, you know, with with parents and children. And uh, and that's always, 
well, it can be really beautiful, but it also can be very confronting and not easy. Um, a colleague of mine, um, uh, well, uh, Nazmiya Oral, she's an actress, and, and we, she made a beautiful play about uh, her relation with her very traditional mother and uh, her not, you know, being religious anymore. And that's, it's really a brilliant play because, I mean, they, they are, you know, they, at the end, they, they're not changing in their opinions, but still um, you feel the love. The, the play is called Not Without Me. So it's about not wanting to, to lose, you know, your, your source, where you are from, but with a radical way of self-expression. And I, I, and yeah, well, you have to be, to have a lot of courage to do that. Mm. But the, that play is, is a really very interesting uh, piece uh, that you can use in discussion with people that are less radical or less, you know, wanting to uh, be radical in their opinions, but mm. can do a lot of healing. And mm. uh, so uh, that's, that's also the way we work. But we had also sim more simple gatherings where we just talked about uh, homosexuality or uh, with traditional moms and and, uh, uh, and and daughters and yeah it's important also to still even even if you are not finding each other in you know in the process to be in in um, to try to still have a communication channel open mm. That's that's easier said than done, but I think that it's really very important for new generations. You know, when we talk about the pain <laughs> in the bodies and we want to have less pain, that's you know a way to 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 start it. To mm. I mean, to, uh, but um, yeah, for example, you know, the training projects I was uh, about emotional body work. We are now for the first time. Uh, we, we work with women, with men with a migrant background, and now we are starting with a, a group of trans women and men with a migrant background. So that's that's really interesting that we are going to work with them. Um, and we're doing it with an organization that's called Trans United Europe. Um, and that's, uh, yeah, a new... A new um, um, a group, a new the, the methodology will be, of course, because we are always doing things, learning by doing in a way, you know, also because you you don't, it's not like it's scripted in books, it's also mm. about experiencing and, uh, but also try always trying to do it with the people themselves. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, so maybe we can go to um, the video that I brought. Um, so uh, when I was asked to bring something, um, uh, I thought, well, I, I would like to show you something that I'm going to work on. Um, and actually, it's 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 not it's it's more. Uh, it's I was in Morocco uh, in November. Um, we were lucky to be able to go there before they shut everything down for the tenth time. <laughs> we open now, but I mean. It was really nice to be in November in, uh, I'm from Tangier. Uh, we went to Tangier and then we went to Casablanca and we were uh, at the very nice little theater, um, the, the group Cabaret Chichet made. They have, because you know, everything is closed. All the cultural venues are, are closed for ages mm. in Morocco and it's really complicated. So they decided you, to have their own little venue when you, only can get like 20 people mac maximum, uh, but they are, you know, uh, doing it anyway. And um, and it's a really interesting group that I'm following for some years. And now we have the opportunity to work together. So they will mm. come in June to Amsterdam. Um, and uh, yeah, for me, it's something uh, because, you know, I'm involved in cultural uh, advising as uh, also as an advisor for Dutch culture of, uh, about cultural uh, in international exchange. Um, and I, I really, um, it's for me, it's really, an, uh, yeah, my, 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 I'm passionate about, you know, uh, having exchange uh, with, artists in Morocco who are um, 
doing things that I most of the Dutch people are not, you know, uh, don't know about Morocco because most of the Dutch, um, yeah, maybe Europeans are, you know, have this projection uh, about how Morocco is and how, you know, people are. And I think that uh, it's really uh, important to see also what, where people are, you know, looking for for new forms, for moder modernity, for uh, experiments, but also uh, always very much in connection with the source and the heritage of the country. And uh, I think the Cabaret Chichet is really an interesting um, group because they are mixing heritage with... Um, a new uh, thinking about gender, about uh, post-colonialism. Uh, it's it's uh, and they are really nice guys. So let's 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 look at. I mean, it's something I made with my iPhone, eh? so it's it has not the quality of your your piece, uh, Luna, but uh, it's fun, I think. Yeah, I'm excited to see. Yeah, I love it. Makes me so homesick. <laughs> yeah, it's really, it's so, it's also. I forgot to say, it's also a lot of fun, a lot of you know, uncomplicated uncompl fun that mm. sometimes we lose in our over men mental world <laughs> mm. over here. Yeah. But it, uh, I liked it. I, I, I wanted to to show this one because it's about Tan Tangier. You know, it's my mm. city, and it's uh, well, Tanja Al Alia. That's really a very well known, uh, popular song about Tangier, and Actually, when they did this little show, we were like five people in the theater. So it was really a private session. And they did all these songs about, you know, the whole of Morocco. Mm. Uh, so geographically, they, they made a trip. And it's, uh, it's very, you know, it's, it's very uh, important, popular cu culture that is uh, not always uh, very, you know, this heritage that is very strong. Um, in Morocco is not mostly not very well documented uh, and it's it's based on um, on the shikhets and the shikhets are the popular singers the, the the women who who are very very important uh, piece of of heritage and um, i mean and they are they don't have the best name you know but actually they were big feminists they were very strong oh. women who are talking about uh, the most um, uh, in, uh, greatest she had, uh, Karbusha is her name, Karbusha. She was, you know, a, a fighter against colonialism. She was singing to the men like you have to fight, you know, the, 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 the French, the, 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 co mm. the colonial people. And um, so there is a lot of interesting history in this, and um, and Rassan, uh, the the leader of the the the, the band, he he um, is has always been fascinating by by this 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 whole you know tradition about the shikhets, and he wanted to, um, to 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 tell their stories in another way, and also right. as men, you know, giving them from. Um, uh, being men, also giving them the, the 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 power, you know, and 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 saying, well, we are we will also dress up as women, and we will we will seek also for our 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 femininity because a lot of men are also you know uh, pr imprisoned in in bodies and in systems, and so from that perspective, it's really interesting, um, and. Um, 
and they are they're, they're massively uh, um, popular in Morocco and and in the in Europe also very much and and also embraced a lot by the queer communities because mostly when I went to their shows in Brussels and Paris and the last one was here in Amsterdam it was you know full of of um, yeah of, of the queer um, uh, migrant community so it's interesting so they will come to to in June, and we are really happy because we have a month to work together and to, to make uh, um, some new performance. And because uh, it's we are going to make a bigger one next year, so it's one step in that process. But I'm really happy we found the funding, uh, you know, mm -hmm. it's also a, a challenge. So, yeah, it's nice. So I'm. Uh, that's what I wanted to... To show you that, to show yeah, you, how, thank you. How, happy, how happy I am, because you know, for me, it's also it's something. Also, when we talk about healing, you know, for me, bringing those two worlds together mm -hmm. is it's yeah. I I really feel like then I am uh, something also in myself is 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 being whole. Mm. I love them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, what what Cabaret Chirat is doing is basically retelling history that's been erased. Because Chirats have always been there and they've always been non-binary or gender bending. You know, or like trans people have always existed all over the world. So I feel them bringing it up and being in a position that they are in is, is creating a real social impact in, in Morocco or like in the communities. Um, but it's interesting because this is more acceptable having males. I, I don't know if they're men or if they're non-binary or females, but like having them um, kind of break that gender barrier and these really harsh patriarchal structures within the societies of Morocco, even though that might not be reflected on this, um, I mean, especially in, in urban areas. Um, it's great that, they, that they've been able to continue Kind of developing and and enlarging their community among different classes and different kind of neighborhoods and people are talking about them and they're they're sparking a conversation that everyone only had for themselves you know um so yeah i'm really excited maybe i come to Amsterdam and jordan <laughs> to <laughs> say hi <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, you're very welcome. I mean, we don't know yet what it's going to be. Mm. I mean, we are not inviting the ten of them, but I mean, mm. some of them. So, and uh, yeah, it's it's really about you know also exploring the themes and seeing what is interesting to do also in the Dutch context, of course, or the European context, because I mean, then you know nobody knows about shichets in 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 Holland, but it's really interesting. Uh, also to talk about what they, you know, what what also about also the whole um, uh, colonial uh, history around it, and 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 what it's, uh, yeah, how how to, um, you know, I think that it for also for a lot of of generation with Moroccan roots, truly really important history. Uh, a lot of 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 young. Um, of young people here are not very aware, you know, about the mm. richness uh, and and all these these stories they, they, that exist, and uh, yeah, maybe I see it a bit as a task for myself, you know, to 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 tell more, to 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 show more this this kind of stories, mm. but always yeah, seeing how you can also combine it with. Uh, because you know the, the what I was telling about the work we are going to do with the the, the the emotional body work with the trans groups, I really I'm interested to see what this that will be, you know what what the uh, the output or the outcomes of that will be, and maybe we can you know see if if some of those stories can be interlined with what we will do there. So it's uh, mm. it's also a big a big um, um, experiment. And who, who are going to be the uh, the audience? You you yeah. If you're going to bring them to Holland. Yeah, well, you know, because we, um, I mean, we already have a kind of audience that is quite broad, but it's um, 
it's uh, yeah, it's also a lot of people who live in the neighborhoods, but it's also uh, people who just you know regular theater public. Uh, but I think that when when you work with them, you will have the the queer community that will come along, you know. So that's also a group that will be will join in. So it's going to be quite a broad group. The, uh, but the only thing is that we will make not very big performances for the moment. So we will see how much, I mean, how much we can handle <laughs> in COVID time. I, I have no clue. It's June. June is good. Huh? June is, uh, <laughs> it like, uh, we are going to be able to, to handle a lot of people. Mm -hmm. We'll see. We'll see. But uh, yeah, very much looking forward to that. And um uh, I think it's really nice to listening to you and that we're having a conversation not only between two countries but actually three country, countries also Morocco and yeah, uh, well, yeah so I, I, I sometimes I was uh, in in the beginning I thought oh my god are we going to talk enough about Germany <laughs> we can skip that <laughs> Is it possible for us uh, from Holland to join your um, uh, your events at OU. You mean online? Yeah, or when we are visiting. Oh yeah, for sure, 100%. Berlin. Yes, please. If you're in Berlin, let me know. I show and is it also I, with, Are you going to speak? Is it? Is uh, are you speaking uh, German over there, or also English? Um, I mean, our team is pretty um, international, so our most common language is English in this space to each other. Um, we do have events in different languages, um, but I would say English and German are like the main languages. And are there also different approaches or new approaches to uh, get people to speak about their maybe traumatic, traumatic experiences? I mean, usually these, are, these, these happen in a safe setting. Mm -hmm. So it's like in, um, in like healing circles, one-on-one um, -on -one sessions, or when it's something um, of like a more collaborative art project, then that would happen in like a, in like a group, and it would be only that group. Yes. So they would they would kind of create their own safe space, and if they if they want to share it with the public, they can. If they want to share it only with people of people communities, they can. Um, so yeah, it really depends. Like we, for example, on on Sunday we have Black Dad's reading group, which is um, Black fathers presenting um, books by Black authors to Black children, mm. and this is phenomenal. Like just being in that space, um, it's just so empowering, you know, because everyone knows. Okay, when you have a Black child uh, in the German context, that we probably struggle with the same thing. You know, kindergarten racism, and I mean, we we're struggling with it at our kindergarten and this shit. But it's something that we could talk about, and we can find. Okay, you know, there's this kindergarten. How about we we reach out to to them and find a solution, or do mediation sessions, or whatever. So there's always there 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 is a a common kind of connection. You know, but if it's like a fubu or like a yeah, if it's a safe setting. So, so actually, you're working with communities, and you're also building communities. Yes, I would, I would agree with that. And the communities are also intersectional. So, what we're trying to do is also when there's like um, a BIPOC group that wants to talk about a specific subject, we're like, okay, but consider um, queer and trans identities, or um, consider identities with folks or people who don't have the financial capabilities to buy. A ticket to to this group or to the session or um, to this workshop. So what we're trying to do is allocate like a specific um, amount of amount of tickets or slots to people, um, which for example displacement background or who don't have a status and therefore um, no financial means to like attend attend these events. So it's that makes it more accessible in a way, you know. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I really want to join one of those events or only look at your space once because it sounds really wonderful. Mm. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, come by. I mean, in the summer there's a garden, so there's more events happening in the garden. Um, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, 
I think hopefully, inshallah, starting next month, we can open up again completely, depending on the whole COVID situation. I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> but I've, I, have a, I have a feeling that this is going to be the summer where we, we can we can use the space to its its full capacity. Yeah. Inshallah. Yeah, inshallah. <laughs> it will come. But great. I, I I'm 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 on that train too, Rokaya. We go together. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice. <laughs> it's on the train. Well I yeah. think we finish up uh before it gets too cozy here. Um but um yeah maybe Miriam you want to share something for the people who are watching from uh Holland uh some upcoming uh events or shows of projects uh, well yeah i mean for the moment uh, we are just preparing you know a bigger performances so yeah the first thing i think is going to be interesting to 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 go to visit is is are the performances in June. So just uh, well, check out Female Economy website. At this moment, we also have a performance. Actually, it's called the Women in Bad in Bad, Vrouwen in Bad. Uh, uh, so that's oh yeah, that's 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 upcoming. Yeah, that's true. Well, you know, and we have uh, also um, some some viewings. We are, uh, uh, oh yeah, we are doing viewings from uh, from our documentary Doulas of the Stad with uh, all these uh, fantastic women who are doing great work in Amsterdam. So yeah, yeah, there's more. I, I forget about it. It's all <laughs> on the website. Sorry, work that you forgot about it. Yeah, we are so, I mean, a, a big collective. Huh? I mean, we are quite some people. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for this conversation. Um, I really enjoyed it. I hope the people who are watching also enjoy it. So I'm going to say your names one more time. Uh, Miriam Sarawi and Luna Spu. Um, thank you and thank you at home for watching uh, this conversation of Dutch culture. See you next time. <laughs>